CM Punk had a right to have a gripe with certain people in AEW. I think so. He was right to ask questions. He was right to, you know, want certain things addressed. He had no right, though, to put his hands on anyone. Multiple times, allegedly, reportedly, ask Ryan Nemeth if he wanted to take things outside. He had no right to do any of that, especially as someone who was given the, the reins of power on collision. At the end of the day, I don't care whether it's wrestling. I don't care. I know it's a silly world of professional wrestling lives on an island of its own. I don't care if it's, you know, your, your right tweets for a living. I don't care if you, you bag groceries. I don't care. No matter what it is, when it gets to the point where you're fighting your coworkers outside of a wrestling setting, outside of a kayfabe setting, backstage, physical altercations, real life, physical altercations backstage, at a certain point, it's got to stop. Remember, that same day as Brawl Out was the, the gripe bomb, he, where he went and he buried the company. That's the other thing. CM Punk went out there and buried the company. And it like, literally, you want to count the three biggest things, burying the company live on that in that press conference in front of Tony Khan. Strike number one. Strike number two. CM Punk going and, and reportedly fighting the elite. And according to many people, some neutral parties, CM Punk was the aggressor there. And then, yes, Jack Perry said a line that he probably shouldn't have said. For someone who made a career, a career out of pushing the envelope as far as what you can say at, for, for, you know, calling people out on real life things live on TV... It baffles me that CM Punk had a problem with some of the things that were said. Like the Colt Cabana thing. The thing where Adam Page, like, referenced Colt Cabana that went over everyone's head seemingly other than Punk. The fact that he got upset at that, it made no sense to me. Honestly, still to this day, it makes very little sense to me. And the fact that it wasn't kind of squashed right there. That's, that might be more of a Tony Khan issue. But the fact that it let Punk bother him to the extent that he he felt like he needed to go on that gripe bomb and to the extent that he felt like Adam Page was not going to do business with him, where he felt like he was in danger to the point where he reportedly, again, Fightful Select last year reported this, that Punk was weighing not going to TV over that. I'm just like, it, that baffles me. For someone who called out Triple H live on TV for his terrible movies, for being a terrible boss, for, for calling John Laurinaitis a stooge live on TV saying, you have him do your dirty work for you. For all he said in the pipe bomb, for all he said in every other pipe bomb that he said throughout his career, it baffles me that, that a guy who made his career off of shooting is this sensitive about other people giving him a little pew pew. That does not excuse Jack Perry. And I want to be clear. Jack Perry shouldn't have said what he said. Was it entertaining? Yeah. It had people talking. It had people talking. And maybe that was Jack Perry's way of trying to work himself into a program with Punk. Wasn't the right way. Just like Punk wasn't right for going after Hangman Adam Page off the air and saying that he can't sell merchandise. Like, at the end of the day, guys... Evidence points to one guy didn't want to make it work. And you can say that, you know, he tried to set up a meeting with the elite. You can say all that stuff. But if he really wanted to make it work, no one would be fighting anyone backstage. And the fact is, Punk found himself at the center of controversy after controversy after controversy throughout his year, two years in all elite wrestling. And at some point, it had to stop. And it did. It just was, it was a match made in heaven until it turned into a match made in hell. That's what Punk and AEW were. It's unfortunate. I hate it. I wanted Punk to work. I wanted to see Brian versus Punk one more time. I wanted to see Punk versus Kenny Omega. I wanted to see all the possibilities that were set out before us. And we aren't going to see any of it. And it's CM Punk's fault. It's Tony Khan's fault. It's... 
Matt Nick Jackson's fault. It it's a it's in part very small part Jack Perry's fault. But at the end of the day, the common denominator in all of this is CM Punk. Tell me when I'm telling lies.